Uh, Mr. Bourne, I want to start this round with you. In, in your testimony, you explained that uh, some child care regulations, uh, some regulations in place that, that affect the child care industry tend to reduce the supply of child care centers, especially in poor areas, driving up prices and um, reducing the rate of formal care options for families. For example, a new law in Washington, D.C. will, when it becomes fully implemented uh, over the next few years, start to require child care providers to earn degrees, in some cases a two-year post-secondary degree, in some cases a four-year college degree, in other cases it might be a, a certification. Um, this, of course, will inevitably have an impact on supply, which ends up having an impact on price. And expensive market-based child care appears to be a pretty widely recognized financial burden for working families. As I alluded to earlier, in a New York Times survey, 64 percent of those respondents who said they expected to have fewer children said that they um, that they expected to have fewer children than they considered ideal, um, at least in part because they believed that child care was too expensive. To what extent do you think child care regulations are responsible for higher uh, child care costs? It's difficult to disentangle the demand and supply factors here. So there are good reasons to think that childcare, even in a market economy, might become more expensive over time as people get richer. Um, formal childcare is very labor intensive. It's difficult to automate in the same way that you can automate in the manufacturing sector. And uh, for the big structural reasons that Dr. Wolfog has talked about, there's been a big increase in demand for formal childcare. Um, over time. And of course, people tend to value their kids pretty highly. So they want a safe, loving uh, environment from them. And for many, particularly uh, upper income families, they want very, very high quality um, childcare. Uh, if you look across uh, states, areas with the highest cost of childcare also tend to be uh, some of the richest states, which, which kind of feeds into this idea that um, prices are strongly um, income elastic. Um, yet, there is a lot of economic evidence, as I, as I suggested, that um, regulations of childcare workers, in particular um, the number of staff required uh, per number of children and also occupational licensing requirements, as you alluded to, in terms of uh, qualification requirements, do raise costs pretty substantially. Um, uh, there's been some academic work that suggests if you relaxed um, across all age groups that staff-child ratio by just one child, it re would reduce childcare prices by about 10%. Um, but actually, the, these regulations are particularly regressive. Um, the best study on this has been done by two economists, Joseph Hotz and uh, Mao Zhao. Um, and, and what they did, they looked at comprehensive data and ran this econometrically. And what they found was staff-child... Uh, ratio regulation in particular, had no uh, effect in improving quality. What it did do by driving up the cost of care was um, in poorer areas, it led to closure of formal centers. And that lack of availability of formal centers led to much greater use of home daycare. So there's a big, uh, there's a massive trade-off here, which is um, measures that people say improve quality. Uh, may well improve interaction time in the formal centres that still exist within a state. But if that means that many poorer families are unable to access formal childcare, we really have no idea what happens in terms of the quality of the informal care that those people are offered. So I would say there's a big trade-off. Lots of uh, upper-income parents want and desire these sorts of regulations anyway. But what these regulations do is strip away the choice for lower income families to select a different price um, uh, regulation, price quality bundle. Uh, and that can have severely regressive effects in terms of access for those people to the labor market. Other than childcare reforms, uh, what are your other favorite policy reforms that you think could significantly lower the cost of living for low income families? 
Well, the biggest um, expenditure is, is evidently housing costs. And uh, as I outlined, I think a key driver of housing costs in uh, many major cities, particularly where economic opportunities are greatest, tend to be uh, associated with overly restrictive zoning and land use planning laws. Um, I don't think that we can really get to the nub of this affordability issue without uh, tackling that problem. Now, evidently, that is a primarily a state and local issue. Um, but that said, the federal government, through schemes such as the Community Development Block Grants, does uh, dish out federal subsidies uh, to states and localities. And to the extent that um, those come without conditions about the supply environment, they can subsidize bad policy. Um, so I think, uh, I know HUD has been looking at this, trying to uh, work out a way of uh, making sure that uh, states and localities have plans to liberalize their planning laws. I think that's a, a, a positive step forward. Uh, and I also think, you know, with this, with this uh, rise of um, rent control as a, as a potential solution being advocated, I'd like to see federal policy uh, come with conditions that precludes those sorts of uh, policies which would damage supply further.